Hey guys, this is Jamie Dennis with Stamp Happy Day. Thanks for joining me. I'm really excited today to come to you with a really fun card that actually uses a fun fold method. And I'll show you, it has this beautiful deer on it. And when you open it, it has these really cool flaps that open and have your message in them. So it's a great card to send to someone. It's not too bulky, so it will still fit in a standard envelope. So I'm going to show you how to make this as well as one using our cutest Halloween suite. So we're going to first start with making this exact card, and then I'll show you how to make the Halloween. We're going to be using the Deerful, or excuse me, Peaceful Deer stamp set. And I love this stamp set. This is in our catalog for the holidays. Let me show you that. This is our 2021 mini catalog. And this goes all the way through December, but if you purchase between now and September 30th, you can actually get some fun paper, which we're gonna be using in this card. So this is the Peaceful Deer stamp set, and then you can get 10% off of the punch that matches this little deer um, when you buy them together as a bundle. So that's how I have it. It's what we're gonna to use today. But this fun punch that's right here is the one that we're gonna be using. So here's some other fun ideas. So let's go ahead and get started with that first card. We will be using the image like that looks right here. It says, oh, what fun. And we're going to use that to punch out the stamp set. I'll go ahead and bring our card back in so you can kind of follow along with the inspiration. Now, the DSP or designer series paper that you can get for free when you do a $50 US uh, dollar order is called the Peaceful Prince. It's right here. It's on page eight of your celebrations catalog. Again, this goes through September 30th. And this is the paper that we're going to be using. I chose two sheets here. One is this really fun one with the actual snowflakes. And I did the green with the snowflakes. So this is real red and garden green. And here is the actual designer series paper. Um, I just cut it into small squares so that you can see it. And the punch does cut out these little deer that are on the inside of this paper. All right, let's get started making some cards. First thing that you will need is a regular size sheet, eight and a half by 11, of real red cardstock. And then you're going to need then you will need this score and we could use a trimmer for this this project I did that earlier and that works great I just want to show you how much easier it is to use uh, with your um, embosser so first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your regular eight and a half by eleven cardstock you're going to use the larger ball on your stylus tool and you're going to score right at five and a half inches take off my bracelet there okay so right down the middle and this is the main fold for the card then we're going to rotate it and we're going to score two times. I'm going to flip this over so that now I'm using the small end of my stylus tool. <clears throat> and I'm going to use it on the two and one eighth marker here. I'm going to come all the way down. Then I'm simply going to turn this all the way around and do the two and an eighth one more time. All the way down. So we are done with that. And make sure that if you do order that you use the Stamp Happy Day website as well as our hostess code for the month of August so that you will get a free Christmas thank you card from me. So this is the host code for August and I really do appreciate your orders. Remember too that if you would like to join Stampin' Up! between now and September um, 10th, I'm sorry, September 30th, <laughs> the 10th, that you can actually get a bundle for free when you do um, a brand new starter kit with Stampin' Up! So that means you pay the $99 um, fee and you get $125 worth of, of awesome Stampin' products. Plus you get to pick any of these bundles here for free. So it is a really good time to join Stampin' Up! But please use that hostess code there. And then the last thing I want to say, because we are in the month of August, that if you order your paper pumpkin kit between now and August 10th, you will actually get the Haunts and Harvest paper kit, which I will be featuring next month and showing you how to use that. So you'll want to make sure that you're part of that club and getting the paper pumpkin in the mail. Such a fun project. 
All right, so we have our eight and a half by 11 piece of card here and my camera is not focusing. Oh, that's really odd. Never seen that happen. Okay, so now we are back with our regular eight and a half by 11. This is when you either want to use um, some scissors or your trimmer, which the trimmer is definitely a much more precise cut. So I recommend that. Now I have a piece of paper that I put along the edge and glued it down with um, tear and tape here so that I can really see the detail of where to cut right here on this side. You, that's gonna make a difference in just a moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and line up <clears throat> my score line. And again, this was at two and an eight, so I'm just gonna find that again. I could have just scored it right on here. That would have also been fine, but I wanna make sure it's really dead center. And then I'm, this is where I'm talking about that piece of paper. I wanna bring my score, my cutting tool all the way down to the five and a half marker um, where I scored it for the center of our fold, okay? So it makes a really nice crisp cut. And then I'm just gonna turn it, bringing it over here to the five and a fourth mark, because I know that's where, I'm sorry, the five and a half mark, that's where my score line is. I'm gonna bring it back up to the very top and I'm gonna bring it down to the two and eight. And I kind of pull here so that I know when it's clear. So now I have a perfect cut and I would save this and use it for another project. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll just bring it back up to the two, to the five and a half, because I'm already on this side of the cardstock. And I'll bring it up to the top and bring this down to two and a half, or excuse me, two and an eighth. And if you go a little bit under, that's okay as well. It really won't hurt anything. And then again, I'm gonna bring this up here, put it into the middle of my cutting line and bring it down to five and a half. Now, the, the advantage to doing this with, um, oh, I didn't get it. Yeah, there we go. The advantage to doing this with freehand cutting is that you can cut a little more precisely on the inside of the score line. So you probably can't see that, but I can. Right here, I scored. And so you can kind of see the dip there. Now that may not matter if you're making a lot of cards, right? It's fine. You can use your, your um, scissors and trim that up if you'd like. What I chose to do is leave it. Um, just depends on how precise I was when I did my cutting. But I will go ahead and grab my paper snips and my bone folder. I'm gonna need those. So the paper snips, I like to do just the slightest cut on each of these edges here so that it will fold into my card. So you can just trim it down a little bit or you can do it at an angle, which I'm gonna just do it at an angle. Just the slightest little angle. And what that does is when I fold these two flaps in towards the center of my card, it won't hinder at all the placement of where it's coming down. Did that make sense? And this is where I'm definitely, I'm a righty, but if you want it more precise, just grab your trimmer. I'm just gonna come back up from the top because I didn't do a good job of cutting that. It's hard cutting on camera. <laughs> there we go. So if you're not good with, with the, um, with the scissors and you're at all shaky or it's not perfect for you, just go ahead and grab your trimmer, it's no problem. And yeah, I think we're ready. And what I did was I went ahead and cut off just that little bit so that it would fit perfectly. So now I'm just gonna varnish and so I'm gonna take my bone folder. First, I'm gonna fold the flap down just a little bit. And then I'm gonna fold my, my two edges in. And when I'm doing that, I'm looking here at this. Ooh, so I'm looking here at this little part where it comes together, which is hard to see on the red. And I wanna make sure that it does meet. And I did do a good job of, of having it meet. So I'm gonna take my bone folder and just varnish the side of each of the two folds. Now I'm gonna take my fold and I'm just gonna double check that I did um, a good job of lining this up. It looks great, actually. Sometimes you'll get it, though, where it does not line up correctly. Um, and you kind of have to just, you know, make it do what you want by just lining those edges up again and then varnishing. All right. I love Christmas time. It's my favorite. Now we're going to start decorating the front and the folds of this Real Red cardstock. So the first one that I like to do 
is the inner um, white flap. Okay. Wait, that doesn't make any sense. So these two pieces, that's to stamp on, we've got the inner piece here, which is just a fourth of an inch smaller than the actual you know, size of this. So it's five and a fourth by four inches. And I'm gonna stamp this. I'm also going to be using another piece of real uh, basic white that is paper here. And we're gonna use it for the front layer, but I'm not gonna need that quite yet. So we'll set that right there. Again, it's five and a fourth by four inches. And I'm going to grab my piercing mat because I do need there to be some foam underneath my images that I'm going to be stamping on. Okay, so we're gonna bring this out of the way here. And what I need to stamp is of course my actual reindeer <laughs> and the images that go along with the saying right here. So for my cute little reindeer, I used crumb cake ink. And I'm just going to ink that up. Make sure that it looks great. And stamp. Now, um, Oh, damn it. Okay, sorry about that. I went ahead and switched. So I don't need the inside piece. So since I got out my cute little reindeer, I'm going to go ahead and stamp the reindeer first so that I can punch her out. And I can make it a male reindeer by putting on the little antlers that come with it. And there you go. Isn't that adorable? I love how easy it is to see right through. So that's our crumb cake ink. And then I'm going to go ahead and use my dear punch. So here's the deer punch. So I've got it turned upside down. Deer builder punch. And this again does come with that bundle. And I'm just going to go ahead and center, which I know I have to angle that towards myself to see. So I just kind of hold it barely so that it's not falling out. And I make sure that it's white all the way around. So I've got a good coverage on my punch and punch straight up. So you've got these extra little pieces here that are the reindeer antlers and a Rudolph nose if you want it. <laughs> um, I have made the male reindeer. This time we're going to use the dough though. And while I have my scrap piece of paper, we're going to go ahead and use real red ink. And we're going to stamp our sentiment that's on the front of the card saying, wishing you a wonderful year and friendship dear. Isn't that cute? So this is gonna go in our oval punch. Let me grab that now. So I'm gonna need a little bit more space here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do it on the side of the angle here and stamp our cute little greeting. And bring our punch in. Now I want to use this larger oval. So I'm bringing that in. Now I will be doing some extra stamping in here in just a moment because you'll notice that I have these really cute little trees on this image and I want to do those as well. So to create this fun little tree um, image, what I did was took the garden green ink that matches our paper that we're using here. I will be using real red in just a moment. So I'm gonna tuck it away over there. And I did some double stamping. So we've got these trees here. We're using the trees that have the three in there. And I'm just going to be stamping them off really twice. So this is the first layer of green. And when I stamp it the second time, it looks like that. So I just want to get it close enough to my deer. Now, last time I did this, I actually stamped it on the paper first. And then I lined up my image. So I would have a funky halo there. So I'm actually going to stamp off on this background paper and then stamp inside again. Okay. So there you go. That's how you do that. And we don't need garden green right now. 
So now that we have our two inner pieces that are so cute, let's set those aside. And we're going to go ahead and do the inner um, side of our actual designer series paper. I'm not our design. We're going to do the inner white piece of paper. Sorry about that. So we are still going to be using garden green and we're going to use the real red as well. Um, I need to move that out of the way. <laughs> so I'm going to do the same thing that you saw me do. I'm going to use this large tree image and we're going to be stamping that. Now I did do it a little different last time. I'm going to just going to play around with it. I'm going to do the large dark tree again on this side, but I'm going to put it farther down and then I'm going to stamp again, stamp off on my paper and, oh, I need to do that again. I could see that there was a weird like shading to it. So I'm going to stamp off and then I'm going to stamp it again. Um, this time a little higher. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing, but on the other side of my card, so just over here and on the side. Okay. I do like that a lot more. Then I need my smaller trees one more time. And it's the same kind of process, except this time I'm doing the opposite of what you're seeing. So I'm doing the dark image on the left. And then I'm going to take it again, stamp off on the paper, and do it down here in the front right. All right. I actually like the way that cascaded more than this one. So cute. I love trees. You can never have enough Christmas trees because they just add so much dimension. Then we're going to take our real red ink. And this time we're using the stamp that says from all of us, same stamp set, all from that dear stamp set. And I'm going to just put that up into the left of the actual tree line. Adorable. So that is all of the stamping. Just cleaning up real fast here. Take out my mat. And we can bring back in our red card base here. And I'm just going to get some Tombow liquid glue, which is my favorite glue whenever I need to make sure that I get it direct, like really precise. And I'm just going to go ahead and put that all around so that I can put the inner layer inside of the card. I like that Tombow glue because I can move it around. All right. So now let's work on the front of our card. So to get this fun popped up effect, what I did was I used our circle dies and I punched them out of the actual BSP. So we're going to have one layer that's our front layer and it is just regular white cardstock, basic white, and it does have that same measurement as on the inside, five and a fourth by one or by four inches, five and a fourth by four. So let's go ahead and glue that down now. But instead of having several layers of white, what I did was I just punched out the middle with dies. Actually, die cut them out, not punch them out. So I just put this on. Okay. And then I'm going to take our front DSP, which measures five inches by three and three fourths. So I'll just leave that right there. And I'm going to use the larger of my two circles. Now, as far as how big this is, this is about three inches. Yeah, but once I actually have it upside down. So it's three inches in diameter, just maybe a hair less. Yeah, maybe a hair less. And the inner one that we're going to use where the deer will sit is about two and a half inches in diameter. Yeah. Yeah. Two and a half and three. Okay. So I will be right back. I'm going to go ahead and punch out the red one from here. And then I took a, um, a scrap piece of the green, the garden green piece, and I'm going to punch that out. So I will be right back. Okay. So I did want to show you how I did that on my die cutting machine. I just lined up my image. Pretend this is the actual die cutting machine. Um, I lined it up in on top of my plastic piece and I took a post-it note so that I made sure it was pretty much as centered as I could get it. And I put that down so that it stuck to my metal frame and to the plastic. And that way it ran through just right and gave me nearly perfect because it's not exactly um, oval in the middle. Okay. Or not oval, a circle. Okay. 
So I have this fun little circle that came from here. I'm just going to use that on another project. So I just love saving circles and I'll pop them on a bunch of things. It's great. And I have our green circle that will go right in the middle. So next thing we're going to do is just glue these down. Glue your green circle right in the center. And there you go. Now I have um, our fun pieces right here and I'm gonna grab some glue dots. And for this, I'm actually going to use our mini glue dots for the deer. And I like to put quite a bit on there. This is like the main attraction, this little deer. So I'm going to put three on the body. And then what I did was I took my paper snips and I just cut, I'm actually just going to take two of these and cut them in half. Okay. So you just cut them right in half and you got a mini, mini glue dot, <laughs> not glue dot, uh, dimensional. So then I put it on her little legs so that they would really stay popped up. I just didn't want the, the legs to kind of be depressed into, you know, the card itself. And then the rest of her body being popped up when she arrived to someone's home. Oh my gosh. Um, am I the only person who loves making Christmas cards? Like I was so tempted to put on my favorite holiday movie and sit and watch while I made <laughs> cards. I've made a couple of others so far this year, but it is my favorite thing to make. I make probably, gosh, close to 85 to 100 cards each Christmas. Um, and my family, they know, and a lot of them keep the cards but they know that that's going to be the main gift from our family. I did put one on her little tail too, because I couldn't help myself. So we're just going to take these off and glue her down. Okay. So now that we have all of our little stickers off, I'm going to center her. Now she is a little bit bigger than this circle. So it's okay to have her hoof hanging off here and then her little ear. Now we have our image that we popped out with our oval punch. And I'm going to use regular dimensionals for that. Just need two of them. You could go with three, but two is just fine. And we're just going to kind of put that on the bottom. I did kind of have it overhanging the actual top. So now we've got two precious little cards. Oh, and I got some ink on there. I just noticed that that ink came on there. Um, now all we need to do really is actually just glue these, these um, flaps for the DSP. Now these, Designer Series Paper Folds, you know, the inside here, the folds, they're going to have two of them, and they are five and a fourth inches by one and seven eighths, okay? So I'll just put that right there so you can see it. And I will have more instructions and dimensions listed out very easily for you to print right off of my blog, and that is also Stamp Happy Day at blogspot.com. So I will link that below, and you're just going to want to glue these on. And one thing I did that was really fun was I um, punched out a bunch of different colors of my deer. This is early espresso. And I'm going to go ahead and just put that on the center. So I did the same thing. I did like the real red deer. I thought she was really cute. I just didn't want her on the front of the card. So um, that was like the perfect fit for the inside of the other card. I'll show you that in a second. So this is what I'm talking about. I had the extra deer. And I went ahead and just glued her right there. So we're going to do the same thing with this early espresso little deer. Just getting little dots of glue here and there. Oh, wait, oh, where are you going? She's flying away. That's hilarious. Okay. So just get her in the bottom right corner there or on the side. And if you do get, I got a little bit of glue, it will dry clear. The Tombow glue dries clear. There you have it. Now, one last final touch, because I love my dimensionals. I can't believe I did that. What I'll do to fix this is I will actually take this off and put a second one there. So let's just look at her. <laughs> That's kind of funny. All right. I do, I fall in love with these little red rhinestones. I don't normally buy a whole sheet of a color of uh, rhinestones. But when it comes to Christmas, you need a whole sheet. <laughs> You really do. You just want the all red or all green if you can um, do green. Now, remember, you can get the the clear ones, and um, 
actually color them yourself. So I'm going to make her Rudolph by putting a little nose right there. And then I picked out um, two more because I like having odd numbers on the front of my card to just go around our fun little saying. So one on the top and one on the bottom. And then I did one on the inside right near this one that says from all of us. Just a little something. There you go. So there's our first card. So I thought it'd be fun to make a second card like this using our Halloween suite. So let me grab all the goodies that are ready to make that. So first thing first, let me, let me move little Rudolph here. <laughs> I used our fun, cute Halloween paper. So this is literally the same thing. And I've already went ahead and cut our card. Now the designer series paper um, is really a blast. So here's our purple. I went ahead and just put everything together. Same deal, right? It's eight and a half inches by 11. I'm sorry, it's eight and a half inches by 11 cardstock. We scored it at five and a half again, right? And then we cut down and down and across so that we have our flap and our closure flap, okay? Same thing. So what we're going to do is the same exact thing um, as last time. We're going to put our white paper down. Then we're going to put a layer here. And I'll show you how to do that. So stay tuned. Okay, so what I did was I went over to my cut and emboss machine and cut that out. And I just used a post note just like before. And I will save this fun little circle. Look how cute that is again for another project. Same exact dies. I could have actually gone with some other dies, but I figure let's just stick with it. <laughs> Trying to see what it looks like as a Halloween. So I'm going to use that Tombow glue again. Okay. So we have that down. Now I took a piece of the Highland Heather this time to cut out the middle um, of the DSP. And the reason I did that is if you look in here, there aren't a lot of papers that went with this piece. Actually, this one would have been okay um, or this one, but I wanted to go ahead and just use that piece as the image is gonna pop up. So I decided to go with Highland Heather. So we're going to go ahead and glue that down right to the front okay and since we're just doing paper i'm going to go ahead i have a the two pieces again they are the same five and a fourth inch by one and seven eighths the same as the last card and we're just going to open this up and glue those on the inside now i could have just stuck with the ghost theme but i was dying <laughs> to use my punch that actually has the pumpkin and the cat and the ghost in there so we're going to be using that punch and it's such a fun punch so we're going to glue down our designer series paper on the inside of these flaps and it looks really good with the purple so i normally gravitate towards like pumpkin pie any of those orange black white um, green for halloween so i'm pleasantly surprised at how well purple goes oops almost put it upside down <laughs> how well purple goes with all the halloween Okay. Now, while I've got these two sheets of paper right here, we're going to take our oval punch again, and we're going to punch out the larger image. And I'm not sure if I want this up and down or up and down. <laughs> so let's punch out one of each, and then we'll know. And I'll be able to tell which one did I like the most. Okay. And then lastly, this is actually probably one of my favorite papers. I've used almost all of this sheet here. It just goes with the whole thing. Okay. Okay, and so the stamps that we're going to be using, again, is from the Cutest Halloween. 
And we're going to be using quite a few of these, actually. We're going to be making the kitty cat, the pumpkin, and the ghost. And then we're going to be using the Have a Fab Boolish Halloween. On the front of the card, it's going to say, Hey Boo. And on the inside, we're going to have this cute little trick-or-treat. So we're using quite a few stamps and punches, which is really fun. I can't wait to give this card to my kids. So the first stamp that we need. We need to stamp in the Memento Black ink, and that's because we might be using some color here. So let me move some stuff out of the way here. Okay, so let's stamp our ghost first. And I have a piece of basic white cardstock, again, with my foam mat underneath because there's no foam to these actual uh, stamp images. So now when I'm doing this, I want to kind of get an idea of where in the world does this thing actually punch. So I'm going to do it sideways to kind of match and stamp that off. Now I need my ghost body. And so I mounted them both on here. Here, this is the ghost body right here. And I'm going to put that on the inside, which is hard to see because I am on the side. Perfect. All right. Okay, so I have my ghost completely done. Let me take off his little body and stick that over there. And I'm going to go ahead and punch him out now because I know that I'm going to have other images here. So I'm just lining the ghost up. So cute, by the way. These make great little word bubbles. So let's take our pumpkin. And we're going to punch or stamp him there. And I need my little jack-o'-lantern, which I've got his face right there. Oh, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and color this in the paper on the pumpkin color. So what I mean by that is I have the dark of the pumpkin pie, and I'm going to use the large tip and just go ahead and color this in first. And the reason that I want to do that is that if I um, stamp my cute little pumpkin's face first, then what happens is um, you won't be able to see them. You won't be able to make them out. And I could have used the light and the dark, but in this case, I just went with the, with the dark. So we're going to grab my jack-o'-lantern face one more time and stamp. There we go. So adorable. I just love the pumpkin. Okay. And this is actually the easiest one because you just got to stamp her upside down. Just like that. Now, they do have inside the stamp set, you can use the actual stamp to do the coloring. So I could have just like stamped this in paper in the pumpkin pie or done like a light gray for the cat. Um, I just wanted to color, <laughs> so I didn't. All right, so I'm going to cut out my outline. Okay. And then we just need her little face. This is actually my favorite little face the kitty cat face and just let it get in here and get a cute little bit. Isn't that darling? And I decided I'm going to do smoky slate. So most of her will be this beautiful smoky slate color. And I'm going to come back in if I think that she needs it with the dark. So this is the light. Sometimes it's good to do the coloring first and then punch it just in case you don't love it. But I mean, you can't go wrong. And I'm trying to see if she needs some de some definition here. Maybe on her little ears. Give her some color there. Underneath her little chin. <laughs> She's so cute. Thanks for waiting for me there. I went ahead and cleaned off my stamps and I've got the images that I need or the sentiments that is. We're going to be using trick or treat, hey boo. Let me turn them upside down so you can actually read them. Trick or treat, hey boo, and then have a fabulous Halloween. So this one we're going to actually do on the inside of my white, but we need to just stamp on the paper here. So one of them will be in the pumpkin pie, and that's going to be our, um, uh, the trick or treat one. <laughs> Couldn't think for a second there. So really easy here, just doing the trick or treat. And then the other will be in our fresh freesia. So I do love Fresh Freesia. It's so similar to Highland Heather. Um, so it's one of my favorites to use. Oh, that's not a very clean image. Let's go ahead and do that one more time. 
Yeah, much better. Okay, and then we're going to be using that double oval punch again. I use this punch so much. So all I'm going to do is center my hey boo in there. This is going to go on the front of our card. We don't need that white one. So that will be going on this piece here and on the front of our card. I use the smaller one. If this ever happens to you, grab a post-it note, stick it on the outside, and then you can load it in there and have control <laughs> over the thing without losing your mind. Um, and I've never done this upside, like side by side, so it's kind of fun. Okay, that out of here. And that's why I was saying, I don't know if I'm going to want it elongated like this or horizontal, which I think I really like the horizontal. So now it's just a matter of putting these things together. So we do have our card front here. The only one that's staying on the front is actually our ghost. And I think that it's just too big of a space for just the ghost by itself if I don't have that oval in the middle. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to put the oval in the middle. I will be popping both of these things up and gluing this piece down. So we're going to glue our hey boo down first. Just like that. And then we're going to be popping up both of these. So I'll use one of the minis down here on the ghost's tail, and then we'll use the regular size dimensionals for everything else. Now this set makes me laugh so much because my um, stepmom, her name is Cindy, but all the grandkids actually call her, I'm going to take this off the tail, okay? It's, so what I did was I took off this little tiny guy because it's definitely going to be in the way. I'll just put it over here. And instead, I'm going to put a dot of glue on the tail of the ghost so that it actually stays down on the paper. Spooky. <laughs> there we go. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and use a little something different. These are the matte decorative dots. And just grab a couple of these. I think they are so cute. I love how they have the ombre look to them. That's the front of the card. Now let's decorate the inside here. And again, I'm going to glue down our trick or treat. I don't need you anymore. I think we're going to do that. I think I want to put them on the top flap. So I'm going to use regular glue. I'm not going to use dimensionals because I really. Um, don't want there to be more bulk to this card because we have so much going on. So it's so thick, right? Oh, you know what I forgot to do is, is color the stem of this pumpkin. So I'll have to grab some green or brown and color that in. I love the little trick or treat. It looks like a, like a stained glass window or something. Okay, so I just grabbed a granny apple green marker and I'm just going to color in the little stem of my pumpkin. <laughs> okay, now we have the inside to do. So let's first decorate that and then I'll glue it down. This is going to be really, really fast and easy. Um, we will need that. I'm just going to use the same Highland, or excuse me, Fresh Freesia. It's so similar to Highland Heather that we can kind of get away with it here. I'm just put that right there. And I'm going to stamp this. I've never used this stamp, so let me stamp it off once. I'm going to stamp that right in the middle of our card. Okay, I kind of like it down a little bit because I sign underneath here and I write a fun message up there. All right. Now I could take my stamp set and keep going. I could do like fun stamping all over the sides. If you have maybe a spider or some other spooky critter, you could absolutely decorate this piece of paper with those. And we're just going to glue it right in the middle. That is so much fun. So I have loved making these cards with you. 
Okay, so here are our final cards. I absolutely love the fun deer card as well as our hey boo card. I hope that you can make these for Halloween and for Christmas for your family and just get creative. Thanks so much for stopping by Stamp Happy Day. Check out my blog for more information and dimensions.